So you want to get started doing live streaming video, but you don't know what gear you need. Stay tuned. We're going to talk about it today on Coach's Corner. I want to welcome you to another edition of Coach's Corner, Empowerment for Entrepreneurs. This is episode number 47. This is going to be a fun one. This is the gear you need to create great video. Today's episode is sponsored by The Marketing Network, themarketingnetwork.tv, profitable marketing training for business owners who want to get results fast. Use offer code COACH at checkout and save 25% on your membership. Hello, everyone. Robert Imbriali here. So happy to be with you. I've been uh, doing video, really online video, for many, many years now. I've actually started streaming video. The first time was back in 2004. So I've been doing this a while, but my background in video goes even further back than that, if I care to think about it. Uh, my degree out of college, actually one of my degrees, I've got several, but one of my degrees out of college is commercial photography. But I was also in cinema communications, which meant I was on movie sets, which meant that I got to use a lot of very different cameras as a professional photographer. I've used pretty much everything, uh, every size, every format of camera you can imagine over the course of my career, I've been doing that. And that was great, but I really wanted to get into video. So in the mid-1980s, I got into video production in a big way. I was working with some of the, some of the, the really professional, you know, $105,000 cameras. I uh, was on sets, on television sets, and working with these giant pedestal-mounted cameras and such. And it was really a lot of fun. I really, I could not get enough of it. I was sort of so passionate and crazy about it. Uh, but, I, you know, obviously, you can't do that your whole career because that's a union job and it only goes so far. And that's great for some people, but I had aspirations of doing more with uh, uh, you know, my knowledge, my techniques, my, my abilities. So I came a long way and I got to this point where uh, I really got excited about marketing and marketing had been the thing for me. Uh, I've been doing marketing now. I'm going to tell you the truth. I've been doing marketing now since it goes way back. Um, I've been doing marketing since, I'm going to guess, 1985 when I was still in the photography world and I got this hint that photography wasn't going to be enough to pay the bills the way I wanted to pay the bills, so I needed to find something else. And I kind of got sucked into advertising for a while and I worked for an advertising agency. I had a title that was like this long and a paycheck that was this big and I said, well, this isn't for me. And that's when I discovered marketing. Marketing is really interesting because marketing for me ended up being the umbrella that encompassed all of it. You know, the photo, the video, the copywriting, the production, the producing, uh, writing ads ads, producing ads, creating ads, the graphic arts, all the pieces, including the speaking, the coaching, the consulting, all of it fits under that umbrella for me uh, as far as marketing goes. And that's what got me excited. That's really what got me into marketing was I wanted to do more. I didn't want to do just one thing. I kind of get bored doing just one thing. I like to do a lot of different things. And, uh, you know, from my perspective, the most fun that I could have is really being able to use my my passion for photography and video and imaging and, and internet and building computers. I've been building computers now since 1987. Uh, you know, I've been, I've been involved with computers for, you know, gosh, I was 16 in 1980 when I got my hands on a TRS-80 for the very first time. So I've been with computers for a long time, passionate about computers, passionate about business. I really love marketing. Marketing is just like my passion. I just love doing that. Uh, so I've got a lot of different things going on uh, that I really enjoy. And I got to tell you, back in the 80s, going back a long way, people didn't even know there was such thing as, you know, an online world back there. Well, I got online back in 1984 on a service called Q-Link. I got on with my Commodore 64, really aging myself here. Uh, uh, but, you know, I, I really saw at that point how wonderful uh, it was going to be, this online world, and how much it was going to change things. I thought, this is amazing. We've got to do this. This is going to be fantastic. Uh, this is going to change everything. So I did. I got involved with it. And I said, this is going to be great. We're going to, going to keep doing it. But one of the things that really struck with me, or stuck with me, I should say, from the very beginning, <coughs> excuse me, is that we were going to take what is essentially computer-to-computer -computer communications, and that was going to replace what we had back then, which was you know cable television, broadcast television, that you would uh, soon be able to do everything from the screen. 
You'd be able to order your pizza. You'd be able to take care of your taxes. You'd be able to find a date. You'd be able to be entertained and just like on and on and on. This is before the World Wide Web, by the way. I actually have a presentation I did in college in 1981 on this exact topic saying that the screen, the screen at that time, I thought it would be the television screen, turned out it was a computer screen, that television and computer were going to intermingle and they would be one and the same. But one of the promises back then was that everybody would have the ability to do broadcast video. Now, that's kind of cool. That's an interesting idea, right? So you really look at that and you say, can I really do broadcast video? Is it possible to do broadcast video? And the answer there is yes. And, and certainly today you look at what we're doing and how we're doing it. Uh, we're absolutely broadcasting video. All of us has, have access to it. You know, you have one of these little doohickeys in your hand and you have the ability to, you know, shoot live video that can go out to the entire world. How powerful is that? But a lot of people say, okay, can I, I, I get that. That's kind of cool. But, you know, what I really want is I really want to be able to use video in my business. What do I need to do to use video in my business? And what I'm going to do, I'm going to talk to you today about some of the equipment, some of the things I use. Uh, I'll show you, you know, what I'm looking at here. You can't see what I'm looking at this way. You can see what's behind me. Studio is behind me. That glass is actually real. It's back there. Another computer workstation there. You can see we're editing some video. And, uh, you know, but you can't see the workstation I have here. It's a very simple workstation because I like to come on and do this podcast without a lot of fanfare. I like to be able to work on the content rather than worry about the equipment. So one of the key things, the key elements of doing live video or video of any kind for your business is you can't let the technology get in the way. So I prepared for you a list of things today that would uh, be helpful for you in terms of setting up your own studio. I know a lot of you want to do that. I get this question all the time. What do you suggest? What do you recommend? So I created a list and I want you to go over to the list I've created ultimatewealth.com forward slash podcasting hyphen tools. Make a, li make a note of that. I'll also put in the description on this video. Um, but it's a really useful place for you to go because there's information there that I'm going to give you today and links directly to buy the, the associated products that I'm, I'm sharing with you. Eh, I'm not getting paid uh, you know, for promoting the products. There's an affiliate link on there, so I make, what, 40 cents if you buy something off that list? You know, it just, it's just kind of like, hey, thanks for making the list, Rob. That's really what that is. Um, but I really help, want to help you with this because it is not difficult, although it is smart to have the right gear to look good on video. A lot of people are kind of misinformed when it comes to this stuff. Like I said, I've got a background in it, so I'm, I'm pretty well informed when it comes to this stuff. And, you know, a lot of people will talk about, for instance, that, you know, the webcam that's on your laptop or that comes on your computer. A lot of people will just say, it's good enough, just use it. And I'm going to say it's horrible especially the ones on HP computers. They tend to be the worst. For some reason, they're flat. They're not contrasty at all. They're blurry. I, I don't know what kind of camera they're putting in there. But think of it from the laptop manufacturer's perspective. Their goal is to keep the price down as low as possible. They know most people are not going to use the webcam, so they're going to skimp. That's an area they can skimp. They could put a, a cheap uh, webcam in there, and often they do. But you want to look good on your video. You want to look sharp, right? The video has to be clear and crisp and contrasty, and, and the colors just have to pop. And in order to do that, you're not going to get away with the computer, the, uh, the camera that comes with your computer. Now, a lot of people say, well, Apple produces a, you know, a better quality computer or a better quality laptop, a, a, an iMac, a desktop, right? Their cameras are better. Not necessarily. I've had a lot of people use the Mac cameras, the iSight cameras, and they're really not that good. So the first thing you want to start with is, OK, I'm going to make the decision. If I'm going to do this, I ought to invest a little bit of money. And I'm, and keyword here being a little bit of money. Don't want you spending thousands of dollars on equipment. You can see I've done that, right? It doesn't necessarily it need to be that way, but I do different things in here, different kinds of videos and training courses and such. So uh, for me, it's kind of a necessity. But for you to get started, you don't need to spend a lot of money to look really good and to look really professional. Again, the key is keep it simple. Don't let the technology get in the way. Make it easy for you. And, uh, you know, if you do that, then you can do more and more of these little videos, little podcasts. I'm doing this as a podcast, so um, I'm streaming live on Facebook. That's number one. 
Number two is I take the video and I put it up on uh, my podcast. So it becomes a podcast, both audio and video on YouTube, on, on iTunes, I should say. And, you know, it's an audio podcast on Google Play, on Stitcher Radio, on, uh, was it TuneIn Radio? There's a bunch of them. There's a bunch more um, that we're listed on now. So people have access to the content in many different forms. And it's also on robertimbrialli.com on my main website. It's there. If you just want to go there and watch it, you can do that without needing to subscribe. Find it on the Coach's Corner page on Facebook. You can find it on YouTube. I have a channel up on YouTube that I put it on. So the content gets spread around and then it gets syndicated to additional blogs. So 20 or 30 different blogs will post every episode of this podcast. So it really makes sense for me to say, okay, I want it to look good because I know, you know, a couple of thousand people are going to watch each episode of this. I want to make it look good. I want to, I want to look good. I want people to look at me and say, this guy knows what he's doing. He has some information he can share. So that's really uh, kind of an important thing. So let's get into some of the gear. Uh, like I said, I'll give you this one more time so you write it down. UltimateWealth.com forward slash podcasting hyphen tools. If you'll go to that page, you'll see all the stuff I'm going to talk about. Actually, there's a little bit more on that page I'm going to talk about here uh, today. Uh, you know, and I, I keep that page kind of up to date too. So every once in a while, I'll go in there and change it when there's new equipment that pops up on the market, because as you and I know, there's always new equipment popping up on the market. Okay, let's talk about the camera. I already gave you the lecture on not using the camera that comes with your computer. You're going to be very disappointed in the results. You want something that is specifically designed for that? Here's a real expensive one. Here you go. $79.99 on Amazon. This was $100 last year, so the price has already dropped um, quite significantly. By the way, these prices of, are of as of this recording. I'd actually pull these prices today. Logitech C922X. Now, there was a Logitech C920 that everyone's kind of familiar with. That's the one everyone recommended. That's been discontinued. They actually uh, didn't update the drivers for Windows 10, so it didn't work very well with Windows 10. But this camera works with either PC or Mac, and and super crisp, very, very crisp, uh, a very good camera, good quality camera. And I like to use it because, uh, like I said, it's very simple to use. So on the computer behind me, you can see on the monitor right about there. There's that camera, the C922, uh, and, and it just sits there, and I use it for Skype and that kind of thing. The camera I'm shooting with here is a little bit more expensive. It's the one up from this, and it is the Logitech Brio. Now... I recommend this one. Here's why I recommend it. If you're a kind of person who's going to buy a camera once and not want to have to buy it a year from now, two years from now, this is a 4K camera. Okay, super sharp, you know, great optics, looks really good. Uh, $159, I paid more than that when it first came out. It was $199. They've already dropped it, which is always a signal that maybe something else is coming. But the truth is, with this camera here, spending a little bit more money, so instead of you know $80, you're spending $160, is basically double, um, you're, you're future-proofing. So you don't have to go and buy uh, you know the, uh, another camera really quickly. You're not going to stream in 4K. You're also not going to record in 4K. There's really difficult ways to get uh, 4K video through a USB cable. Not going to happen. However, this camera has a Thunderbolt connector on the back of it. And if you have a Mac or future PCs will have that connector, you will actually be able to stream stream um, 4K video, or at least record it to your computer. Streaming, it's probably not going to happen. So that's really useful. That's very helpful. So that's the uh, that's the camera side. That's what I recommend there for you. Um, next up, audio. <coughs> Excuse me. This is really important. Um, for everything that you do, audio is going to be the most important piece. You can get away. If you really didn't want to spend money on a camera, listen. You can get away with a camera that's on your computer. Do not, however, use the microphone because every one of these cameras has a microphone, right? Your computer has a microphone in it, but it's a pinhole, tiny little, tiny little pinhole. You can hardly see it. In fact, if I took the iPhone and I tried to show you the camera, I couldn't even show you the, I couldn't even show it to you. It's so small. It's a tiny little pinhole. So how good a uh, quality of audio you're going to get from that, it's going to sound like you're in a big empty room. It's going to sound horrible. And the truth of the matter is you can get away with bad video. So if you didn't want to buy the camera, you wanted to use the camera on your laptop, you could get away with that with one caveat, provided that you also have good audio. So you've got a professional quality. This is a professional microphone. It's about a $250 microphone, and it's got a, a windscreen on it, a little flag on there for the marketing network, right? And it's just, it's just 
simply on a on a boom stand here, and it makes me sound, I think, pretty good. You know, behind me, there's a, let's see, if I move over this way here, I got to move over this way. Uh, you can't really see it. It's pointing the wrong direction, but it's over the mixer. This microphone right here is a $700 microphone, which I normally find in radio studios. And I use that when I'm doing voiceover work, or if I'm doing that kind of thing. So that kind of mic is, is useful. You don't have to go that far. I'm going to give you a simpler solution. You can get a microphone that is a USB microphone. Now, a USB microphone is important because you do not want to plug uh, an analog microphone into the microphone port of your computer because it's going to pick up an annoying hum, right? The little CPU that's in your computer is, is switching tens of thousands of times per second, and it's making an enormous amount of buzz. And your, your, an analog microphone is going to pick it up. This one will not because it's a digital microphone. So it comes into your computer via USB. So zeros and ones rather than analog or what we call a sine wave, right? I think that's what they call it, um, a signal. So what's happening is this was coming in digitally. It's not going to pick up anything. And the microphone sounds great. I have a lot of clients that uh, I've recommended the Blue Yeti USB microphone to. comes in different styles. You can get a black one. You can get a silver one. I think maybe there's even a white one. Um, and what you do with this one that really is interesting is you plug your headphones right into the microphone so you can hear yourself and hear, you know, how, how good it sounds. The people who use this, and there's a lot of people um, who do podcasts that use that particular microphone, and they love it. And it's one I recommend. It's, you know, $115. It was $99 forever. It's gone up a little bit, but it's worth it. Uh, you know, like I said, that one will sit on your desk in front of you. It's, it's a big diaphragm. So the larger the, larger the diaphragm of the microphone, the deeper the, the sound is, the richer the sound is. And uh, that one does an excellent job at that. It also has an opportunity. It always has a setting on there where you can do it where it has, it'll really separate itself into two microphones. So you can be on one side. You can be interviewing somebody on the other side. And as long as you're both speaking in the microphone, it'll pick it up and it'll sound like literally like you have two microphones there. Um, that's really kind of cool as well. So that's an, a great tool, a great microphone, $115. So, so far, we're not talking too much. We're talking about, you know, $79, $80 for a camera, another $115 for a microphone. And you already have the computer, right? You already have that piece of it in place. So no need to go crazy about, oh, I need a computer. I know you already have it. It's there. It's good. It's good. It's good. Use what you've got. And, uh, you know, when you get more um, into this or if you get more into it because some people won't continue with it some people go oh, i don't know i can't get on camera but it's addicting i gotta tell you the more you do it the more you want to do it um, at least that's been my experience of it okay let's talk about monitoring your sound i said on the blue yeti microphone you plug your headphones in now you know a lot of people just use the white things right you get these things with your phone they're great this is actually um if you look at this where the volume control is this is actually the microphone as well there's a little microphone symbol on the back of it a lot of people don't understand that you can actually use this hold them in and you know the microphone's close to your face so it'll actually work but it doesn't sound great it really doesn't doesn't sound great and this i don't know it doesn't look professional to me i don't know why it doesn't look professional so i don't like using them not a lot of people use it maybe they don't care so much i use uh something that's much easier. It's the Mi MEE Pro in ear monitors. They're $48.96. There is a cheaper version of this. There's the one, I think it's like $26, $28 or so. And they're really nice. I'm actually using them right now, and you couldn't even tell, huh? When I'm looking directly at you like this, you can't tell. However, if I turn, you can see that it's definitely here, right? So you can see it a little bit, but you know, people don't pay attention to that. So it's not distracting. It doesn't, you know, the last thing you want is a giant headphones with the big cups on them and, and the big bar over the top. Uh, you know, that was when we had nothing else. You can use that. You know, the, the, with the boom microphone that sounds like you're, in a, you're talking through a tin can, absolutely not. Those are completely out, gone. We don't want to touch those anymore. So the Mi Pro in-ear monitors, they go into your ear really nicely. They don't show up. They don't stick out. Uh, you don't have the big white cable. What I do with the cable, because the, they actually fold over backwards and if I could show you the other one here without making a mess of my audio <laughs> so what happens is they fold over the back of the ear just like this so this part goes in your ear the wire goes over your ear and all I do is I clip them to the back of my shirt and I throw them behind me and they don't show on camera 
So it looks very professional. But I'm actually monitoring the audio so I can hear what I'm, you know, what I'm saying to make sure the microphone's good, make sure the audio sounds good. Uh, it's real important to do that, real important to do it if you're doing interviews. So if you're using Skype or something like that, you got to hear the audio coming back. So you need something. Um, like I said, the white things are nice. It's not my choice. Could be your choice. Not my choice. Okay, let's go on. You need a little bit of light. Uh, Got to shed some light on the topic. It's real important to do that. I have a different lighting setup, and a lot of people like the lights that I have because they look really cute, but the quality, the build of them is so bad that I couldn't recommend them. So this is another kind of light. This is a little rectangular light. Um, a lot of people will tell you you need these giant soft boxes. The light's got to be super soft. Um, that's not true for video. Video actually works better with specular light. It works better with light that's a little less soft. Um, if you ever go into a studio where they're doing the news, uh, where they're filming the news, you will see that the you know the bulbs are there and and you know they're Fresnel lights typically and and they're not soft. This idea of soft lighting came about. Um, it's good for beauty lighting and photography. It's real important to have a large soft box. When it comes to video, sharper lighting is better. So this is kind of a nice hybrid, right? You've got the sharp light. If you don't put those little soft boxes uh, that you see up to your right there, if you don't put those in, um, you get a you get a specular light. If you want to soften them a little bit, you clip those little soft boxes on. Um, one hundred and fourteen dollars comes with the stands and the bag. Uh, you don't need a lot. I tell you, it's not a very expensive proposition. Um, my lights actually were less expensive than this. This is actually a better set um, than I have here. And I'm going to show you my setup here in a moment. So really, you just need the you need some lights and uh, don't need a lot of them unless you're doing green screen. Then you need five lights. If you're not doing green screen, you need two. So people, ah, I want to do some green screen work. Well, great. You need five lights. Five. I don't want to do that. Right. Um, so I'm not using green screen. That's actually behind me. Uh, you know, it, it, you'll see it change from time to time. Um, so you can get away with that. You could say, hey, I'm going to use green screen. And you could, you, but then, you know, better to have soft boxes for the lights behind you, spec your lights on, on you. And obviously you need the fifth light, which is a hair light that causes separation. Otherwise the green will bleed over you and your hair will disappear into the green. So a lot of people understand that that's uh, it's a little bit more of a more involved technique. Uh, yes, the software does a lot for you, but you know, keying is the lighting is the most important piece. So for what I'm doing here, this is the setup. This is really simple. This is what I'm looking at. So you see the microphone in the middle. That's what you're seeing. Uh, I have an iPad over to my left. What I'm doing with the iPad is I have the live stream running. So I can monitor the live stream. So I know, uh, you know, if it fails, if it dies, if it drops off. Um, what I don't see on the iPad is the comments. I really want to fix that. And there's a computer in front of me. And on top of the computer is the Logitech Brio camera. Two little lights, and you see them. They're just round. They're, they're, they're specular because they're small, but they are softened. Um, so they're not harsh light, nice soft light. And to the right, I have a laptop computer, and that's where the PowerPoint slides are. So really, I've got three computing devices. You don't need to be this fancy. You could just do it all on one. Um, I have a little bit more stuff in front of me here, so um, I do it there. The mixer, if you're using the Yeti mic, the mixer you see under the boom arm there with the little red uh, plugs in it, there, you don't need that. That's not necessary if you're using the Yeti. Yeti just plugs into your laptop with a USB, slip the camera on top of it, turn on the lights, and you're ready to go. So like I said, my setup's a little bit more complex, but it's not that much more complex. And what we're looking at here is not thousands and thousands of dollars of equipment to do this podcast, which I think is real important as well. And the burgundy and gray uh, foam you see on the wall behind you, it just sound baffling. So I don't get a lot of echo. So I'm in this room. We do a lot of recording in this room. Uh, like you, when you see the, the setup behind me with the other microphone there, we do voiceover work. We do video editing. This is actually the control room that keeps an eye on top of the studio. So it's real important to keep it quiet. So there's some sound uh, absorbing foam on the walls as well. So that's really helpful. Okay. So, you know, now we're looking the other way. So, you know, I just showed you what it looks like in this direction now you're looking back at me and you can see what it looks like in the other direction and there's some of this um where is it here this foam here the sound foam you can see a little bit here on the wall it's on it's on three walls of the studio that side is mostly the glass wall that you see behind me so hard to put um foam on the glass so very simple stuff now you might say okay Camera, microphone, uh, in-ear monitors, some lights. That's it. Four pieces. You know, keep it simple. Like I said, you don't want to be too crazy with it. And then you want to go to what is the software I want to use? Well, if you're a Mac user, here's a really popular one today, Ecamm Live. Um, I think it's ecamlive.com. 
I think that's where it, you'll, you'll, if you look up Ecamm Live, you'll find it. It'll be the first link on, on Google. $39.95. And that is a piece of software that allows you to, you know, bring in some graphics. Maybe like the, the slide you're seeing right now in this case is actually PowerPoint. And it's, like I said, it's on the laptop and it's coming into the main computer. And, and you know, this allows you to do the same thing, but it all does it on one machine rather than uh, needing to. I actually don't need to. It's just I prefer to have two so that I can... Um, you know, monitor what's going on in front of me as far as the the stream goes. And I have to have the uh, PowerPoint slides taking over the entire screen. So Ecamm Live, that's kind of a nice little tool, thirty nine ninety five. Like I said, the software is really not uh, that uh, expensive. Here's another one. A lot of people are loving this one. Be live, and there's my friend Mary Smith, uh, a really popular social media strategist. Um, their paid accounts twelve dollars a month. I mean, really, if you want to do that, if you want to do the standard account, $20 a month, uh, if you're using it, you're using it. This is really fantastic if you're doing interviews. Uh, the other person will just log in you know, to a website. You log into the website. That stream is then taken and then thrown onto your Facebook. So you can you can stream um, you know, to Facebook Live with this tool, bring up graphics, bring up lower thirds, do all the, you know, the fancy stuff. You'll start to look like you're a real television producer. So be live, I think it's belive.com um, is a great tool for that. Um, I've used them a few times. I don't use them in my studio. I'll tell you in a minute what I'm using here, a little bit more complex for those of you who, uh, you know, want to get a little bit deeper into this. And by the way, uh, you know, by all means, go, you know, make it look the way you want it to look. Um, I'm, I built this because it's my vision. It's what I wanted to do. A lot of people look at it and go, yeah, I probably wouldn't do it that way. You're right. You probably wouldn't. You probably have a different idea about it. And that's the cool thing about this is you don't have to follow what other people are doing. So this is the software I'm using to run everything here. It's called Wirecast. And this has been around for uh, quite some time. It's actually one of the first softwares that allowed multi-camera switching. And uh, now it's, it's to the point where it's really, it's really wild. You can bring in streams. So if I wanted to stream a YouTube video, I can grab the YouTube video and stream it and have it as another source and pop that video in and out anytime I wanted to. So let's say, uh, you know, you're going live on your YouTube channel. I could grab your stream and I could say, cut back to you back and forth. And we could be, you know, it's just, it's just a nutty piece of software. There is a free version. Now, this is important. If you stream on YouTube Live, when you set up an event, in other words, a scheduled event, it's going to ask you, would you like to use Wirecast or your own encoder? If you say, I want to use Wirecast, they're going to give you a link. That's the only way to get the link. And you can download a free version that only streams to YouTube but it'll get you really uh, into this software. You can see that the price, uh, you know, for the, the lower end version of this is $695. Works with both PC and Mac, but it's really a complex piece of software. There is a little bit of a learning curve, but um, I have actually had a lot of people who are coaches, consultants, speakers, that kind of thing. I did a little video tutorial, and I had them download the YouTube version and stream to YouTube using that version. And pretty much nine out of 10 had no issue doing it. So it's not really a huge learning curve. If somebody just quickly shows you the ropes on it, um, you can get it done. It'll be, uh, it'll look really good. So that's a, that's a tool, powerful tool. I use it here, really like it. And um, like I said, I've been using it now, gosh, since version two. I think we're on version eight now, and I've got the, the pro version with all the bells and whistles because we do different things here. So I've actually got it running on both computers. I've got it on that computer when we're doing the studio with multiple cameras and, you know, you want to bring in guests and it's got it's got all the all the pieces in there. But it's a more complex piece of software. BeLive.tv would be, uh, BeLive.com, uh, I should say, is going to be the easiest for you if you want to do interviews. That's the easiest way to do them. They look great. They look fabulous. You're streaming them on Facebook Live and 12 bucks a month, you know, nobody gets hurt with that. That is easy. And that's where I would suggest you begin, uh, as so many people do. The other thing you need to do, well, you need obviously some internet, right? And what I always tell people, and, and this is true for uh, anybody, I mean, a lot of people think, well, you know, I'm, I'm okay with my, my wireless connection. My Wi-Fi is really good in the house and, you know, I, I can surf the internet all I want. The truth of the matter is your Wi-Fi isn't great. And what happens is people think, well, I can get away with my Wi-Fi because it's really good for streaming, uh, for surfing the Internet, I should say, and answering email and, and surfing for Facebook. And, you know, I can watch videos on Facebook with no problem, so I should then be able to send video. 
Not necessarily true. Here's what happens. Uh, you want to download speed of a minimum of 20 megabits per second and an upload a minimum of five if you're going to do any kind of streaming. And you want it wired, not wireless. I got to tell you what happens. You, do, you start doing a stream and you say, I'm going to just use my phone right? Or I'm going to use my laptop or I'm going to use my desktop and I'm going to do it with wireless. The problem is the wireless band that, that we have that is sort of free and open and unregulated uh, part of the spectrum, the radio spectrum, everything is on that. Taxi cab drives by. You know what frequency they're on? 2.4 gigahertz, the same frequency as your wireless, uh, your wireless router. You know what your neighbor's frequency is on? They have the same wireless routers. They're on the same frequency because those are the only, the only frequencies that are available. 2.4 and 5 gigahertz are the only frequencies that are unregulated and, and available for Wi-Fi. I joke. I tell people they, they turn on their microwave. Guess what? 2.4 gigahertz, same as your wireless router. It's going to interfere. Pop a toast in the toaster oven. You know, it's going to interfere. Not really, but, you know, close enough to it. And you start to look at that and you say, wow, if I'm doing something that I really want some reliability, do not use Wi-Fi. Especially don't use cellular on the phones because the phones heat up. And the moment they heat up, it really can't send anymore because that, you know, the CPU is working hard. It's processing the video. So what happens with video, and people don't recognize this, is the device is capturing video. Then it's got to encode it before it sends it. So what's happening with my computer is, you know, I've got the Logitech Brio filming me here. That signal is going into the computer. Wirecast is, is creating the stream. And then it takes the output of that and it has to encode it before it sends it to Facebook. Facebook's not doing the encoding. The encoding is done locally. So that means your CPU is going to heat up. That means your wireless card is going to heat up. That means after a while, your video is just not going to keep working. So, I mean, that's the truth of it. And like I said, wireless is very unreliable. So you want a wired connection. Okay, enough lecturing on the wired connection. You get it. You need an Ethernet cable. You got to plug it in, right? That's the only way to do it. Uh, and, you know, a lot of people say, well, I don't have an Ethernet port in my computer. These things are cheap. <laughs> you know, 20 bucks will get you an Ethernet connector. You plug it in USB, plug in your Ethernet, and you have a wired computer. You can even do it, by the way, and I do. With an iPhone, an iPad, Android phone, they sell adapters for that, and you can you can get Ethernet to run on uh, your devices if you're doing if you're using those to to do your live streaming. So you don't use a wireless connection. So I've got a lot more for you. I mean, a lot more that I can share, but I don't want to overwhelm you. I don't want to scare you away and say, "Oh my gosh, that's really too hard." I don't want to do that. Um, I'd like this to be easy. I'd like this to be effortless. I'd like this to be something that you're going to get involved in and get get rolling with. And I'd like to invite you, to, if you have questions, to send me an email. This is my email address. It's been my email address now since 1999. It's been a long time. Robert at ultimatewealth.com. Just send me an email and say, I've got questions. I want to know about live streaming. I want to know about how this is done. And would you like to come to my studio where I will teach you either one-on-one -on -one or as a group, how to set all this stuff up, how to get it to work, and more importantly, how to appear calm, confident, and powerful on camera. If you'd like that, send me an email because I may actually do that course. That may be a course that I do or I create it on video and then you will have you can buy access to it and uh, you know, we'll put it online for that. So let me know. Send me an email, robert at ultimatewealth.com. And, uh, you know, we, I'll get your questions answered for you. And, you know, if you'd like a, a course on it, let me know. And I will actually consider doing a class on this because I'm real passionate about it. As you can tell, I love this stuff. Okay. Want to switch gears here just a little bit. And want to thank our sponsor this week. Today's episode is sponsored by The Marketing Network, themarketingnetwork.tv. <coughs> Excuse me. You can become a better, more successful business owner with the help of our world-class instructors. This is video training, online video training. So if you're a person who uh, really works better by, you know, uh, looking at people and, and, you know, rather than reading a book, you'd rather watch a video, well, this is for you. Works on all devices. And we've got great world-class instructors, Mitch Axelrod, Dr. Terry Levine, Sylvika Rosca, who also talks about, uh, you know, how to become an internet superstar, how to get on and start live streaming. Uh, Dr. Roberta Shaler, Adam Urbanski, everyone knows Adam, right? He's a very, very famous, very popular um, marketing guru, and he's come into the studio and shared some of his secrets. 
The marketingnetwork.tv, like I said, is all video and plays on any device. So if you want to watch it on your phone, your tablet, if you want to watch it on your desktop, laptop, or if you want to watch it on your television with Roku or Apple TV, um, we have uh, the ability to do that. So you can watch it whenever, wherever you want. Unlimited access to it. And uh, really, it's just a subscription. It's $9.95 a month, not an expensive subscription. And we're adding new content regularly. And you can use offer code COACH at checkout to save 25% on your subscription. Go have a look. The Marketing Network. TheMarketingNetwork.tv. Good place to be. Fun place to be. And we're like I said, we're going to have um, new courses being added all the time. All right. With that, I just want to uh, remind you that uh, this is a podcast. So that means you can download it. You can subscribe on iTunes. Uh, you can have it downloaded automatically to any device that you, uh, wherever you, you know, find podcasts, we'll have it available for you. Or visit us online, robertimbriali.com, and it will be there for you as well. And not only that, if you wouldn't mind giving us a quick like, I love that. That really makes me feel good. Makes me feel that this work uh, is making a difference and helping you. Also, Go ahead and share it with your friends. You know, you're on Facebook, you're on YouTube, you want to share it with your friends, click the share button, share it out. That helps me. Uh, obviously, the more people who watch this and get value from it, um, the better off it is for all of us and encourages me to do even more of them. So with that, I want to say thank you. Thank you for watching today. And I look forward to hearing from you. Send your questions to robert at ultimatewealth.com and uh, I will answer them as quickly as I can. Thanks so much for watching and I look forward to doing this again with you next week.